do God's will. He has given us the tools we need. And his purpose we're going to fulfill. has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. Amen. Amen. Good morning, saints of God. Thank you again for joining us for another Sunday, a first Sunday at that. And we thank God for his presence. And we thank God for his many blessings, keeping us all week safe from harm. Amen. I'm going to turn this part of the service over to our Pastor John, where he can open us up um, this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mount Moriah Community Church. Uh, once again, we thank God for each and every one of you in your attendance this morning. God has put something in you to be here with us, to hear what thus saith the Lord. And no doubt God has already prepared our hearts and our minds through the music that has been played and listened to. We thank God for our sister Jackie lining us up with all of those wonderful songs. And once again, God wants us to hear what he has to say. So as you sit and listen or as you dance around your room because of what the word is doing to you, that's up to you. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Habakkuk 2 and 20. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Just give me one moment here to get the music rolling. Start our praise and worship slide. Amen. Put your hands together.
This means war. I will not be shaken because I'm in God's army. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. We're going to go right into our announcements. Amen. Welcome, first time visitors and special guests, and happy birthday to all of you, April babies. It's that time of year again, and in honor of Resurrection, Good Friday service will be held April 15th at 7 p.m., the seven last sayings of Christ. Join us for this very special service. Mark your calendar for our upcoming church shut-in, April 20th to the 22nd. Don't miss this opportunity to fast and pray for our congregation and for others. Are fuel prices too high? Come and get fuel for the soul every week, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at our Bible study group. Get all the fuel for the soul that you need to help you make it through a crazy week. Youth service will be canceled in the month of April due to Resurrection Sunday.
please join us again in the month of May, third Sunday. Women of Favor Women's Group meets every fourth Tuesday via Zoom at 7 p.m. Stay tuned for exciting details about the upcoming discussion. God loves a cheerful giver. There are several ways that you can give, either online through Zelle or Givelify, or you can mail your checks. But please make your checks payable to Mount Moriah Community Church. Want to learn more about the announcements you've heard today? Visit us at mountmoriahcc.com and get all the latest information about Mount Moriah Community Church. Now, enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Thank you, Dr. D, for those announcements. And I would just like to um, also repeat about our website. What's nice about it, um, if you have missed any of the announcements that you've heard and would like to hear them again, yes, you can go to our website and get caught up on what's happening here at Mount Moriah Community Church. But also, you can gain access to any one of our services by clicking on the link that is found on the website. So if you, if I missed sending you a link or maybe it might've gotten deleted, you can always go to our website and click on the link for any of our upcoming services. So I think that's really a really cool feature with our website. Um, stay informed, keep informed, and never skip a, skip a beat at what's going on here at Mount Moriah Community Church. Would like to just again give a shout out for those who just came in. Thank you so much for joining us. And yes, our April birthdays. I would like to just um, read off some of the names um, of who was born in this great month of April. And our first is Shamiqua McBride. April 1st, happy belated birthday to you. Adam Key, uh, that's April 6th. Uh, we have Stephanie Parks Mitchell. Her birthday is April 13th. Our dear mother, Letty Parks, April 16th, amen. John Jr. McBride, that's April 18th. We have Charles McBride, uh, April the 24th. And last, um, Lena Pickney, her birthday is April the 26th. And again, we wanna thank all our um, April birthdays, our April babies, as we call them. God bless you is our prayer here for you as well. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Um, right now, we're going to go into our scripture reading. Thank you for listening. Uh, that is going to be done by our Elder Roy Stewart. Good morning, Elder Stewart. Well, good morning, Sister Jackie. I got my war clothes on. All right, now. Don't take them off sleeping, um, um, Elder, Elder Roy. Don't take I'm them off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be reading, I'll be reading this morning from the uh, King James Version, and it will be from some... 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. He will not suffer my, thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. 
Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you for the reading of the word this morning, Elder Roy. Right now we're going to have our morning prayer by our Elder Rhonda Sheckett. Amen. Oh, Father. God, we deem this a priceless privilege. You've allowed us to enter into one more Zoom service, one more day of life to serve you. We give you, we give you honor, praise, and glory, honor, praise, and glory, honor, praise, and glory. Oh, especially at this so sacred time of the year. Oh, Father God, as we examine ourselves, we examine the, uh, our Savior's sacrifice for us, the shedding of his blood that we could have eternal life. We give you so much praise and honor as we reflect on what it cost you to ransom our soul today. Thank you for life and health and strength, food and shelter and raiments to, to wear a God that we can get to 24 seven. Oh, we don't have to make an appointment. We're so grateful today. Oh, Father God, continue to manifest your glory upon the service. Magnify yourself this first Sunday. Magnify yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Rhonda, for that prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. This is such a solemn time of year to reflect on his sacrifice, his love for us. So grateful for that. So grateful for, for that. We're gonna go into our testimonies, songs and scriptures. Yes, if anyone has a song or scripture or testimony, uh, please place your name in the chat box if you would like for me to call on you um, or you can wave your hand and unmute yourself. Amen. Thank you so much. Good morning. Go right ahead, um, Elder Rhonda. Praise the Lord. Um, when we were sharing, Sister Cynthia, First Lady Sheckett and I this morning, testimonies are timeless. Ah, da, 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 Father God, we had an elder in our church at Mount Sinai and the doctors had given her up. She had cancer that had developed all through her body and she looked like she was nine months pregnant mm -hmm. and she entered the Lord da, 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 did such a work. She, they wrote her up in the medical journal of that time. I'm saying this to encourage everyone that, da, 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 that might be afflicted in their body. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. And down to, 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 to her sisters who were born again, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. There was a, a service that was being held and as weak and frail as she was in her body, she made it to this particular service. And when she stepped out, stepped in the door and walked toward the altar, the power of God fell on her and dropped that tumor right out, right out of her body. Oh, and she commenced to being rolled all over the floor. Wow. You see what called us holy rollers. Wow. She was saved. Sanctified Holy Ghost filled, and the Lord raised her up to be a wonderful evangelist for the Lord. There's no secret what God can do. Amen. There's nothing beyond no matter what the doctor says. If he gives you up, you're a perfect place for the Lord to manifest his power. Amen. Oh, just keep the faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You, Jesus. That's all right. Hallelujah. There is nothing impossible for God. Nothing. nothing. Amen. Yes, Lord. He's the same God back then as he is today. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you so much for sharing that powerful testimony. We are yes. all miracles here today, this morning. That's for sure. Amen. 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 
I'm a miracle. I'm living with a miracle. Pastor John is a miracle. I live with him every day. He is truly a miracle. God uh, is nothing, nothing. We should be encouraged all around us seeing mighty hand of God in our lives. So thank you so much for reminding us, Elder Rhonda. Yes. Of his saving power, his keeping power, and his healing power. Amen. 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 Go right ahead, Sister Cynthia. Good morning to you. Good morning. I uh, I signed on only about five minutes before 11, uh, and I was able to catch First Lady Jackie and Rhonda, and I was just mentioning that God is, thank, I'm praising Jesus because he is answering prayer. Yeah. I have a lot, I have seven children and five daughters, two sons, and one of my daughters, who used to tell me at one time, she didn't even know how to pray. She's calling me now and asking God for spiritual advice for her and her significant other. Hey, so I, I, know, I know God is doing it because even when I was in Somerville, Charleston, uh, I think it was last year, uh, the young man told me he wanted to go to church with me and he kept his promise. He went to church with me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And God really started and God really is drawing, saving, and touching people's hearts and convicting them and giving them Jesus. a hunger and a thirst Thank you, Jesus. to know him. And I'm giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And I'm also asking for prayer for my oldest son, Raphael. I found out that he is really broken. And um, I'm believing God for the saints to pray for him because um, he has a, a drinking problem. And I know when we go on this fast and pray and shut in, God is going to break some yokes. Yes. You know? Amen. And I, I, have, I really haven't paid enough attention to him. And I'm putting him on the altar today. Amen. Jesus over. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Nothing too, nothing too hard for God. Amen. That's for sure. Amen. Amen. Like I said, we're miracles here. Amen. Amen. And you don't have to be sick to be a miracle. Don't forget, sin is a sickness. And if you've been saved today, you are a miracle. Amen. Amen. Anyone else this morning who would like to share? Oh, Deaconess Frule, go right ahead. <laughs> Good morning. Thank the Lord for being here this morning. Thank the Lord for I just like to sing a little song. Don't stop praying. The Lord is nigh. All right now. Well, don't stop. Yeah. You lose your cry. Well, Lord has promised, and the word is true. Don't stop praying. He answer you. Well, don't stop praying. The Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. Oh, the Lord has promised. And the word is true. Oh, yes. Well, don't stop praying. He answer you. All well, right, now. Wonderful song that came out this morning. It said, don't stop praying because he's answering you. He said, put on the guard this morning. Yeah. But we left out, you know. But we know where we're going. And no God will get us there. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for Sister Simmons and her family. Thank the Lord for... Uh, uh, Elder Rhonda, thank the Lord for email Pastor uh, Checker. Thank the Lord for being here today. Thank the Lord for he answered my prayer. I wasn't feeling good last week, and I thank the Lord he answered my prayer. Hallelujah. And I felt this morning, and I guess he said, I wonder if you're going to, you know, to recognize before I get to church. And I said, I recognize it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just uh, raised my hand. Hallelujah. I got up the bed and got on my knees. So thank you, Lord. I know. Hallelujah. Said, so don't give up. Hallelujah. Keep on praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop thinking. Hallelujah. God, what he had done, he will do it. He don't lie. Hallelujah. He can't lie. So why are you doing the thing that we do? You know, hallelujah. Just continue. Hold on to faith. Hallelujah. Faith is a thing. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Until he do the thing. 
Hallelujah. He's God. He is God of. He comes when you need to come. Hallelujah. Yes, and when you come, you can know it that he came. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for being here today. Thank the Lord for seeing your face. For happy hallelujah for the little rain. Thank the Lord for the grace. Hallelujah. Yes. Hey, hallelujah. Yes. This morning I got that. Hallelujah. Glad, glad feeling <laughs> down in my in my soul. Hallelujah. He said you may not come when you want it, but he'll come in time. When you he come, you know it when he came. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I can say, yay. Let's continue. Pray for my grand. Hallelujah. Like they always say, pray for me. Hallelujah. Because God say, keep on praying. Yeah, don't give up faith. And he said, he said, keep on praying. Go. He is truly coming back again. Hallelujah. Coming back without a spot of drinking to church. Without a spot of drinking in uh, El Roy this morning. Thank the Lord for him. Hallelujah. Let's keep on praying. Hallelujah. The Lord is not. Hallelujah. He never miss us. Thing yet, hallelujah. What you ask for, hallelujah. He said, You will give it to you. I thank the Lord for the rest of today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God gave you a healing, gave you a hallelujah. Yes. God gave you God, whatever you ask for. Hallelujah. He said, You will give it. Hallelujah. Just hold on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Unchanging hand. He's got an unchanging hand. Yes, Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Sister Paul. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to hold on to you, Sister Paul. We're going to hold on to God unchanging hand because there is no other way. God unchanging hand. Hallelujah. He's going to take us through one day. Hallelujah. And we'll be glad we hung on. Hallelujah. If you let go, hallelujah. That's going to be the day that he comes and we'll miss out. Hallelujah. Anyhow, hallelujah. Don't let that anything upset us that we may get off the floor. Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. Be right there. Hallelujah. No problem at all because he got all things in his hand. Hallelujah. His sight is far still fetched an hour. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord today. To see your faces today. Thank the Lord for raising my hand, my voice. Hallelujah. To the rooftop. Hallelujah. Because he is real. Hallelujah. And he is risen. When he risen, we are ridden with him. Thank the Lord. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. That's all right, Deacon Esprue. You keep praising him. Amen. He is truly worthy. Amen. Sister Wendy, good morning. Good, good to see morning. your smiling face this morning. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to be among each and every one of you. I just wanted to add to that um, April birthday list. Okay. Um, Sister Perry, my mother, celebrated her 95th birthday yesterday. Oh, my. Thank God in front of each and every one of you for keeping her here so long with us. Wow. That's all right. Uh, so April 2nd. April 2nd is her birthday? April 2nd, yes. All right now. Wow. That's 95 years young. That's all right. right. Oh yes, yeah. he's he's still as feisty and outspoken as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too hard for God. No, no, no. Not and I want to add my my brother to the list. He's been um, he's a remarkable guy because God has put His hands on him. He had trouble back um, in his 30s and 40s with drug abuse. He's turned his life around. He got baptized at faithfully paying his tithes. So I want each and every one of you all to pray for him because he's a, he's a good guy and he thoroughly believes in God. And he's, he's witnessed some of God's miracles during this short time. So pray for him. Keep him in your prayers. And add him to the prayer list for the shut-in, please. Okay, Ricky, right? Uh, Rich, yeah, we call him Ricky. Ricky Perry, yes. All right. That's what we're doing by. 
<laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Prayer changes things, Sister Wendy. You are a witness of that. Prayer changes things. Amen. Keeping you and all your family in our prayers always. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. God bless you. Mother Parks, I think I... I'm sorry I had to keep muting the different ones. Well, that's were... okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's just that when it's too many people open, it gets a little, you know, so oh, um, you. now is your time, Mother. All Paul. right. I thank God for this morning, giving honor to those who, who do honor. I thank God because as, as the song says, the storm is passing over. We have been through two years and God has blessed us to see this day that we've never seen before. I thank God because as Jesus was in the ship's sleep, Peter, and the storm was just raging and all of that. And God said, he, God doesn't sleep, nor does he slumber. He heard it. But when Peter called, he, he, act, he woke up. The storm did not bother him and the storm is not going to bother us because he's in the storm yes, yes. and the struggles that we are going through, the light afflictions that we've had. Lord God, I thank you because I'm able to see this day. We've missed, I miss my loved ones that have gone on. I, I, I think about them often and I give God the praise and the honor because God has no respect to person and he will deliver whatever you ask him to do. I thank God this morning because he is been he has been good to me. And I can't forget what he has done up in this present time. You pray my strength in the Lord because we should be giving God a note of praise to taking us through this terrible times in our lives this year. Nobody should not leave without saying thank you. No more thank you, Jesus. Because it was him that we were leaning on all the Amen. time. Amen. So I will pray my strength to the Lord. Thank God for Sister Gladys and, and I. I think we're about the oldest one. And Sister Perry, we're about the oldest one that's left. So we thank God for that. <laughs> my birthday is the 16th. I'll be 91. And I thank God for just his to, to survival. It's a survival race. Hear me? <laughs> <laughs> We thank God. We thank God for all of you all. Y'all just take care and be, be vigilant. Focus on what God wants you to do. It, the time is winding up yeah. and we don't have that much time. And the word, it, world is coming to it. It's got to because the things that's going on now, my God, my God. We thank God because he's taken us through. He woke me up. Still got my right mind. Still able to walk around and still able to drive and get around. I thank God for He has done so much for me. I can't forget it. Can't forget it. So you pray my strength in the Lord that God to continue to keep us going. Yeah. Keep me standing. Keep me looking up. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mother Parks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Smith, good morning to you. I'm going to come back to Sister Smith. I know with her cell phone, she's having a little difficulty of unmuting herself. Anyone else would like to share this morning? Share of God's goodness. Oh, there she goes, Sister Smith. Go ahead, go ahead. You hear me, Jackie? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Good morning, Mount Mariah. I'm reading the 27th Psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked eat my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fail. Though war should rise up against me, in this I'll be confident. There's one thing that I desire of the Lord, 
that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. That's the fourth verse of the 27th Psalm. Amen. Upon the mountain, over the hill, down in the valley, I got to do God's will. God's been good to me. He brought me out of my sin. And I'm doing my best to make it in. After a while, it'll all be over. Oh, yes. And I won't have to worry no more. You know, the hat that I had had never been told. I did save my dying soul, and I'm doing my best to make it in. Thank God for laying Thank that God. song on my heart. Oh, okay. yes. Doing my best to make it in. Thank God this song for waking me up and I'm closing my right mind. Thank him for closing. And I thank God for the use and activity of my name. Thank God for everything that he do for me and everything that he's going to do for me. Thank God. I love you all. And Pastor, before you get off, check it. That's it. Bye-bye. Love you. Amen. Love you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Smith. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Anyone else this morning? Chloe? Sister Chloe? Brother Austin? Exodus 20, 117. May God speak all these words, saying, I am Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or is that, or that is in the water on the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a just God, facing the iniquity of the fathers upon children. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments, that shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, so the Lord will not hold him guiltiness, that taketh his name in vain. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, for the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, that nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy thy, thy man servant, nor thy cattle, nor a heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rest of the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day, and how did honor thy father and thy mother? that thy days may be long upon land, which the Lord thy God has given thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, thy neighbor's. Proverbs 21, 21 to 23. He that followeth of the righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Amen. Thank you too. 
for always, as I, and I say this without fail, always reading God's word. Amen. Be encouraged by it, you too. Amen. God bless you. Anyone else this morning would like to share? But we're going to go right into um, God's word this morning, presented by our pastor, John P. Sheckett.
Amen and amen again. We thank God for, once again, everything that has been said and done, the songs, <clears throat> excuse me, the testimonies that have gone up, the prayers that have been said. And we pray this morning and ask you, Lord God, to receive all that has been done, that it may bring glory to your name. We thank and praise you for accepting, Lord God, with your humble service have presented to you today. And we, we pray and ask you for help, Lord, continuous help in our walk before thee. Help us in our conscious mind and in our heart, in, in every area of our being, that we can glorify your holy and righteous name while we're here in this limited time on the earth. So we praise and thank you, Lord God. And as we prepare our hearts and minds to be strengthened by your word, continue to touch who needs to be touched, heal who needs to be healed, and deliver where deliverance is needed. Through the power of your word, Lord God, it is so. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank God and thank you for um, being here this morning. And you might think, once again, I always say this, that you brought yourself here, but you know it's God that has brought you here to hear what he has to say. And it's always about strengthening us. It's always about encouraging us. It's always about keeping us in the world way that he wants us to go, that as we travel through this life, that we can bring his name. Amen. And as the songs that have been said and sung from the beginning, that this is a war, no doubt about it. The Bible tells us explicitly that there's a fight going on. There's a fight for your soul. And there is a fight going on each and every day. There's no let up, church. And so if there's no let up, then you have to remain vigilant vigilant in your walk with your savior amen now the first scripture that i'd like to start with this morning comes from first timothy chapter 1 verses 18 and 19 before going into the ephesians chapter of 6 and 10. first timothy reads like this uh, this charge i commit unto thee son timothy according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So Paul is telling us about this concerning his son Timothy, to war a good warfare. Now, what do you think he's talking about when he's saying war a good warfare? A lot of times we think it's on the outside, but a lot of it has to do with the inside of us not the outside. I want to give you um, an idea of what I'm talking about. This past week, uh, I was at the gas station. I went and got gas for the car, but I also needed to get air for the tires. So I didn't have the change to put into the machine. So I went inside and asked the person for four, four quarters for the dollar so I can use the air machine. So he gave me the change and you know, you always, or I can't say always, a lot of times when someone gives you change, you don't even bother counting it. You just hold it in your hand or put it in your pocket and you go on your way. Well, in this particular case, uh, I had to put, this was 75 cents in the machine. So I put the three quarters in the machine, the air started working, but I noticed when I opened my hand, I had two quarters left. So right away I said, ah, he gave me an extra quarter. So I put the quarter in my pocket and I went on filling the tires with air and so forth, not really thinking much about it past that, but on my way out, on my way out of the gas station now, the Lord spoke to me. We're talking 25 cents, church, 25 cents. You know he gave you 25 cents too much. What are you going to do about it? Now, he spoke to me only once. The rest was up to me. I could have kept driving down the road, ignored what God had put in my heart and mind about remember what you receive, discounted it as it's just 25 cents. Come on. Well, this is where we talk about fighting a good warfare within your own soul. It's only 25 cents to you, but what does it mean to God? It means righteousness. Do the right 
thing. It doesn't matter. The amount never matters. It never matters. It's doing what's right. That's what matters. That's why we have the fight from within. The warfare is from within us. We talk down what God is trying to bring us up to, a level of being righteous before him. There's, you know, when we talk about God, he's righteous in every area, right? And he wants to bring us up another level. Our sinful nature says, ah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. That's what our sinful nature says. So, but God is fighting us by, you know, trying to raise us up. Get up another step on that ladder. Get up another step. So anyway, long story short, I went around the corner, went and gave the, <laughs> and of course, you know, when you do the right thing, people are shocked. So I give the man a quarter and I told him, I said, look, you gave me an extra quarter and change. You gave me five quarters instead of four. So he looked at the quarter, he looked at me, he said, I gave you five quarters. And it was almost like pretty much saying, you came back for a quarter? Without exchanging words, I just uh, said, thank you. And I, and I left. But talk about feeling good from within. See, because when you're not doing good, your conscience will wear you out. Will wear you out with what you should have done. And that's the thing for us to understand. If you continue to ignore your conscience, if you continue to ignore the spirit, your conscience will be burnt away. And you think a quarter, you'll be, you'll be saying that for $20, for $100. dollars you would be saying that for $1,000. You know, you always make excuse why not do the right thing. So again, the war is from within also, more so than it is from without. But God, there's a war on two fronts. And I know if you ever watch um, anything dealing with history and, and battles and wars, generals do not like wars on two fronts because it weakens you. But we have a war on two fronts. You have a war from within yourself and a war from without. And God is saying, be prepared for that war. And I'm going to read that scripture in a few moments to let you know how to prepare for that war. As this scripture fulfills in this particular verse of uh, 18 and 19, it says, holding faith and a good conscience, see, good conscience, which some having put away that good conscience concerning faith, having made shipwreck. And that's what's gonna happen to you, church. My little example here of a quarter, will cause you to uh, run into something much bigger and you start to fight and with God about other areas of your life. Uh, and, and God is saying, you know, it all started because you didn't want to give the man back the quarter. You, you, you know, you're praying to me, you're singing songs of praise, you're listening to the, the, the Christian radio, but I asked you to do the right thing with something so small and you couldn't do it. What is the problem here? Why don't you want to listen to me altogether? It's for your soul's salvation sake. I'm trying to raise you up on another level of the ladder because that ladder, as that song says, goes higher and higher. And eventually it reaches into heaven. Amen. Remember that there was a song we used to sing in, in the church. It says something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. See, that's where it starts. It starts from the inside, not from the outside. See, the outside, in all intents and purposes, is sort of like superficial because you can put on an outward appearance of being good and righteous and whatever, but inside full of wickedness. Remember, Jesus was telling the scribes and the Pharisees, you were hypocrites because you put on a, an outward appearance of being holy and righteous. But on the inside, you're full of dead man's bones and excess. So as that song just said, something on the inside. It's got to work on something on the outside. Amen. That scripture that I want to uh, read to you about how do we defend ourselves a bit against all of these things, as you know, it's the scripture that we all are very familiar with in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord 
and in the power of his might, not yours, because we, we don't have any might. It's God's might. And that's who you have to call on in order to be able to fight back the wiles, which are uh, the, the, the tricks of the enemy. He's got lots of tricks, baby. You know, that thing around Hollywood, the trick or treat. He's got lo lots of that going on. But his might, it's the power of God's might. Put on the whole part, the whole of God, that she may be able to swile of the devil. We saw, heard that song about what do you after you've done all that you can do? What do you do? Stand. You just stand and just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. You pray, you have fasted, you have asked God for whatever help that you need. Now just to believe that God is able to deliver you. We heard songs and testimonies about that this morning, about great deliverance by God. That takes faith, church. Remember, get up on that next ladder. How, and how can you get up on that next rung of the ladder if you're not doing the small stuff right? If you can't do the small stuff right, how are you going to get to do the bigger stuff right? God has got to work with us like from elementary school, you know, and help us to understand that it doesn't take the big stuff right away because you can't take the big stuff. It's the small stuff first. It's just like being fed by the word. You can't, eating the word of God, you can't eat the steak of the word of God. You'll never be able to digest it. But we have to get the word of God just like a baby, you know, baby food, right? You don't have to chew baby food. You just swallow it. And that's where God has us and needs us to be in order for us to step by step by step, climb the, ring, the, the rungs higher and higher in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the devil's got a lot of stuff going on. The wiles, right? Doesn't stop. Even when you're asleep, he doesn't stop trying to provoke you one way or another, attack your body. Have you ever awakened in the middle of the night all because of a pain, uh, because of something going wrong in your body? The enemy doesn't stop. The enemy doesn't stop. So that's why your faith has to carry from you putting your head on your pillow at night, thanking God for the going to sleep with praise on your mind, praise in your heart. Thank you, Lord God, for being so gracious to me. Thank you, Lord God, for being God, saving my soul. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you go to sleep like that and then in the middle of the night, God takes you into heaven on a praise of thanksgiving to him? I tell you, it, it's a wonderful thing to get into the habit of doing, but that's up to you in your relationship with God. No one can force feed you the word of God. That's up to you to do for yourself. So this armor it's not for somebody else. This armor is for you to put on. Amen. I know we would love to put it on all of our family members to be defended by the things of the world, but they've got to want to put on this armor. You as the Christian, you that are saved, you that know what this armor represents and means, that's why you put it on but you can't put it on to somebody. Verse 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And you know what wrestling is, right? That's just on the floor with somebody, just one take trying to get advantage of the other person. That's the whole point of wrestling. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're wrestling with spiritual wickedness. The Lord had taken me uh, in a vision when my dad was not, uh, was still an alcoholic. And he took me, uh, you know, it's ironic. Uh, I was, believe it, uh, sometimes when God, I don't know about you, and I know that it's more than me that has had dreams by the Lord or visions by the Lord, but I'll explain myself. I was on a highway in the middle, uh, uh, I guess it's the 
to the other side of the road, the median. That's right. So I'm walking on this, and there is this giant black cloud, and I wanted to fight this. I knew what it was. It was a spirit. It was a, it was the uh, uh, satanic spirit, because it was moving around almost like in a, in a, uh, a, a figure of a person. And as I'm, I'm down here at, on the ground, on the media walking, I look at myself. I look at myself. I have on no shirt, but I notice I have something around my neck. All right. I have on what would be considered a skirt down to my knee and a, a, a belt with a gold buckle and a sash going down the center of this skirt. And the skirt was like embroidered with something, something wonderful, all I can tell you. And I had sandals, like the sandals you would wear back in the times of Jesus. And they were like gold. So I'm walking. And I look up to this thing. And I said, I'm wondering, how can I get up and fight this thing? And the voice told me, you're an angel of the Lord. You can fly. And as soon as he said that, up, I went. And as I went up, I went into this black spirit, but a spirit has no, you can't grab a spirit. So I'm in the middle of this thing, trying to fight it and, and, and going nowhere. But God brought me to my mother's house and this black spirit became a solid black mountain in front of my mother's house, like a pyramid. And I grabbed it by the point and I picked it up and I threw it in this giant hole. Satan, throwing Satan back, or if not back, at least into the abyss. And God, at that time, was letting me know that my dad was going to be saved from the alcoholism. God is good and his mercies endureth forever. So the flesh and blood, no. That comes through. In the case of people allowing Satan to use them, and there are more than enough people out there, you know this, that don't care, don't have any kind of faith in God, don't even realize that there is a God, don't even care that there is a God. Well, they're, they're like uh, feed for Satan to use, to control, to do all kinds of mischief. That's why you get people that hate. Because that spirit of hate from Satan has caused them because of their lack of a knowledge of God. And so, yes, he works through people, Satan, through these wicked spirits, but because they allow Satan to use, even though they don't understand it all, Satan doesn't care if they don't understand. That doesn't uh, prevent him from using people. That's why you have to be careful that you don't allow Satan to use you. That's right. In any way, even as a Christian, Satan can still try to use you. Why is there so much trouble in the church? Because people allow Satan to use them. They get into flesh and they cause more trouble than someone from the world coming in. So something to be aware of, church, in this verse 12 of what we wrestle and who we wrestle with these high places dealing with you know um, satan and his wickedness some demons stronger than other demons some wickedness really really powerful powerful wickedness and god alone remember told peter said, um, and they asked Jesus, you know, why couldn't we cast him out? Well, first Jesus said, because of your unbelief. But once Jesus cast the, the demon out of the boy, Jesus said, but these come out but by prayer and fasting. Uh, so once again, uh, we have to understand what tactics to use when we're fighting up against Satan. And, and don't think that you can come up with your own tactics. We have none. It all has to be God-related church you all we all have to depend on god you have you have to depend on god it's not god no 
and how you need to form the attack against the strongholds of the wicked. Amen. Verse 13 goes on. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day when the, the Satan is attacking you. Because he, if he hasn't already, he's done all to stand. Go back to that word stand again. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. See, this is how you have to walk. Remember the 25 cents, right? And having on the breastplate of righteousness, you have, you have to want to do the right thing. In order for this armor to work, you have to want to do the right thing. You have to be walking in rightness, okay? Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You have to be reading your word. You have to be reading your word. Not when you feel like it. Well, you should be feeling like it every day. Reading some part of the word of God because it's your power. It's, that's where you get your power from. It's from the word of God. That's where you get your strength from. And that's how it's going to build up your faith and trust in God because the word is going to minister to you. All right, so, you know, the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, believing God will, will save you, whatever arrows Satan throws at you, whatever uh, artillery he sends your way, your shield of faith, and that's, what is faith? The substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. When Satan lobs things at you, it's not because you have something there that's protecting you to him until you bring up that shield of faith. But you can't just go to the closet and get it. You have to be walking around with this stuff. Now, of course, we're talking figuratively, right? When you leave the house, you're going to have that same, that same hat that you go to work with or school or wherever. This is some strong stuff because it's the word of God. And that's who you are relying on. God's word tells us, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. He is the shield. All right, not you, not me. God is the shield. All right, he's there to protect you. I don't know how many times God has showed you uh, where you have missed out on someone trying to do you harm. I've had a couple of occasions walking home from work, somebody following me. And uh, if God hadn't, I don't know what happened, but before they could uh, uh, come and do anything to me, they changed direction. That only comes from God. I didn't do anything, but I could hear the footsteps getting closer and closer. This is that night coming home from the train station to the house. God spared me. Or coming from the bus stop and at night, of course, and all of a sudden, out of a, out of a block, a whole group of young guys come walking out of, uh, out of another block, turn the corner, and I'm walking home, but in the direction of them. And they start walking in the street, almost like getting ready to cross the street to come over to me. But God had them pass me right by. Now, how does that happen? When so many times you hear on the news, at least I have, of people getting bopped over the head, random acts of violence, especially when there's a group, because you're, you're easy prey, if, if there's a group especially, to try to just rob you of whatever possessions you have on you and hit the road. But God will tell Satan to go another way or block them from seeing you. Again, this is spiritual stuff, church, but you have to be prayed up. You have to be armored up in order for these things to happen to you, for you to escape. Because we're no different than the person that got bopped over the head, right? Only that God has us in his hand. And we have on the arm that we're talking about this morning. Amen? So that's why you don't take it off. I know I, I heard uh, Sister Jackie mention to uh, Elder Stewart about... <laughs> Don't take that, uh, that armor off, you know, go to bed with it. That's right, because we're talking spiritually here, right? But keep it on. 
you keep it on at all times. Verse 16, above all things, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's what he is firing in your direction. Amen. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. The word of God. That's where your power comes into play. And a lot of times, you know, we don't think, we don't think, we don't think when something comes up, we forget about praying to God. I don't know how, I don't know how or why this happens. Um, the first thing is, is not fainting. It, it's saying, God, please help me. It takes a couple of words. God, please help me. And he'll come to your help. I don't know. Don't think about how that would be or, or whatever. But God has a way that goes beyond any, anything we can think of. So if something was to come your direction or your way unexpectedly, a lot of times that's how Satan works, unexpectedly, or comes to try to take advantage of you, Someone that you thought was a nice person now you find out is not a nice person trying to take advantage of you. Just call on God. Not call on God to destroy that person. That person needs help. That person needs prayer. But for God to help you to overcome whatever it is that this person has done that you thought was uh, not just kind, but also, who knows, maybe a church person. Yeah, I know. That's a hard to understand, but it happens even with a church person, someone who claims to be a Christian. We're not infallible people. We're not infallible. These things come upon us, but don't let it taint your relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't let it change you, who you are in your fellowship with the God of your salvation. That's what Satan loves to do. Takes a Christian and cause them to lose their salvation. But now all of these things happening by other Christians to cause you to get discouraged and say, oh, there's nothing to this. Otherwise, God would have protected me. Well, what is it that you're not doing that his protection did not come to your aid? Remember the quarter. Remember the quarter. It takes every walk with God to be right. Because this particular scripture uh, comes from James. But let me read you uh, what I have written here. God refuses to answer the prayers of those who are selfishly ambitious, love pleasure, and desire honor, power, or riches. Scripture tells us that God answers the prayers of the righteous. And that comes from Psalms 34, 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The righteous. That means doing the right thing. Doing the right thing, church. Remember the quarter. Remember the quarter. God, in his grace and mercy, wants us to understand, as we already know, I think, by this time, that First Peter 2 and 11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. That's why you have a fight also with inside of yourself. It wars against your soul, these things. Desires, God says, turn from them, because you're fighting yourself. And if you're fighting yourself, you're fighting the spirit that's trying to let you know, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't be that person because that's going to destroy your soul. But the weight for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 10, verse 4. I'll read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshy. There's no physical gun or sword but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And how is that? Through prayer. Prayer is what changes things. Prayer is with talking to God. Another little story. My mother was having trouble with someone at her job, causing her all kinds of you know, mischief and mayhem and so forth. 
And God led her to a scripture in the book of Psalms. I'm not reading that scripture to you because I don't want anyone to be reading this scripture for the wrong reason. And she read that scripture. She followed what God said, read that scripture. And guess what? Guess what happened to that woman? That woman had an accident the next day, which caused her not to be able to come to work. And my mother said, ah, so now I have inside information of how to get rid of people that cause me what hurt, cause me any kind of mischief, I know what to do now. So when another incident occurred, I don't know if it was with the same woman or a different person, she goes back and she reads that scripture. Well, don't you know that did not please the Lord because he did not direct her to read that scripture for this other person. And the Lord came to my mother and told her not to do that ever again. Now, I don't know the exact words that were used to my mother, but my mother was afraid of God. Whenever he came to her because she did something askew, she would shake and quiver and she never did it again. I tell you when, you, when you do something God is not pleased with and he confronts you with it, let me tell you something, not only will you know, uh, but it will send shivers down your whole being. And that's the thing that you need to understand. God is a loving God, but when you don't do right in his sight, he didn't kill my mother, he didn't destroy her, but he let her know he was displeased. It's just like a parent, right? When a child displeases the parent, the parent lets the child know. Man, she never did that again. These are things that we have to understand that don't think that you could use God to your own ends, okay? When God instructs you to do something with his word, then that's one thing. But don't you think now you can do that whatever way you want it to happen for you, for your own purpose. That is not happening. And so don't ever think that way, all right? Remember, we're talking righteousness here, right? Doing the right thing. And don't ever think that you can come up with the right way of handling a problem or situation. We, we, we in a, a simple natured body don't come up with the right ideas about doing something. Settling the score, as they say. Uh, making things right in your own mind. That's all wrong. That is all wrong. You have to talk to Jesus and pray and ask God first to help you to get over whatever it is that's got you in that frame of mind. Okay? Again, remember the quarter. My last point of scripture, I want you to um, read to you. It comes from the book of James. Chapter 4, starting at the first verse. Because God wants us to understand, he doesn't want us to miss heaven because of all of what we think the world offers us, all of these attractions. You know, it's like an amusement park. It has lots of attractions, right? Lots of things that cause you to have fun. But that's the world. It has a lot of attractions to make you think you can have lots of fun. That's why there's Las Vegas, right? That's why you see today, uh, or Atlantic City, or uh, any of these places that uh, offer you such conveniences to gamble today. Your own cell phone will get you into a lot of trouble, not just with gambling, but with pornography. You don't have to go to a peep show anymore. They went out of business, the peep show. You got your peep show in the palm of your hand, you know? To, to tear you down morally. And that's, oh man, Satan is just clicking his heels with all of this new technology and being able to take God's creation to another level down in our walk on this earth. So be very careful of how persuasive Satan is, spiritually speaking. You can get into a lot of trouble using these devices, amen? A lot of these things that are convenient for us are very convenient for Satan to get you into trouble, to spiral you down the rabbit hole that you can't get out of. Amen? 
So just be aware of this. So James chapter four, starting at the first verse is the last scripture I want to read to you this afternoon. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your, your, not somebody else's, your lust that war in your members. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. Now remember that scripture that I read to you from Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth the del and delivereth them out of all of their troubles. The righteous, the righteous, okay? The first part of that is God refuses to answer the prayers of those who are selfishly ambitious, love pleasure, and desire honor, power, or riches. And I told you that scripture tells us that God answers the prayers of the righteous, not the wicked. So who, do you, who are you serving? You just, you serving your flesh today? The desires of your flesh, because the desires of your flesh are strong. That's not just, that's for everybody, unless you keep it under the foot of the cross. Every day, church, that's, that's the warfare, right? That's the struggle. That's the tug of war within you, within you. God wants us to understand for you to get out of it. Oh, they have such a lovely lifestyle, you know. Look, they got trouble too. And the trouble, the bigger trouble has yet to happen once they die. They ain't seen trouble yet. Going to hell is the biggest trouble you will ever fall into. But he goes on to try to let us know some of the things that we need to stay away from. And these are not things that we don't know already. And isn't that interesting? That even the things that we know, we can still fall into them. It's just like a person smoking a cigarette, right? How many commercials on TV have you seen to discourage people from smoking, of people that have lost parts of their body, people that have had cancer, um, and missing parts of their, their, their throat or some parts of themselves, can't talk, can't breathe, and yet people still smoke. Doctors still smoke. Yet they, have, they see this, they have been born. So God warns us still. He tells, us in, tells the preacher, uh, continue to warn my people, warn them of the wrath to come. Warn them of what's going to have them either go to hell or stay out of hell by the things they do. God says in verse four, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? That means that it's opposed to God. It fights God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. It can't get much plainer than this church. If you need understanding about this, then you need to pray and ask God, well, what exactly are you talking about? Yet, I understand I'm in the world, you're in the world. We can't get away from that. But don't get involved in the things of the world that will tear you down morally. Morally, the things you see on TV. God Almighty, you know, uh, all of these um, programs that they have on certain cable uh, networks, it's like you, you, you would never think that or have imagined that it would get this bad, but this is nothing yet. Uh, we haven't reached the lowest point yet. The lowest point is when Jesus said, I got to come back. That's when the immoral behavior of man will be such that the very elect, as the word tells us, will also be subject to falling. So he's got to come back. Wow, even the very elect. All right, let me just finish this and we'll close. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, 
but giveth grace unto the humble. Here we go. Submit, submit, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But you've got to submit to God. You can't try to resist the devil without submitting to God first. Because you don't have the power. God says in verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Wow. It's a fight, church. It is sure enough a fight. But what's going to take you through it? Are you going to do a rope of dope like Ali did with Frazier or with uh, George Foreman to win? It's whatever you need to do to keep yourself right before God. And keeping yourself right before God doesn't mean you're doing evil. You're shunning evil. You're running from anything that might be evil. It's up to you. What do you want? Do you want to live? I cried out to God one day when I felt a wicked spirit trying to take me over. And I said, God, I don't want to die. I want to live. And he understood what that was. I don't want to go to hell. Told that spirit to back off. How about you? Amen. Let us pray. Precious Lord God Almighty, holy and true, we once again do praise and thank you through the power of your word, Lord God. Looking to thee, the God and author, finisher of our faith, for what we need so we can get this pilgrim's journey right. And if we have it right thus far, help us to keep it right in Jesus' name. See, Lord Jesus, these small foxes that spoil the vine that interfere with our relationship with you, interfere with the prayers that we pray because of just little stuff we think is little, but it's big in your eyes that we can keep it right, keep ourselves at a place where you will hear our cry. So continue to work on us, Lord God. We do pray so we can get this journey right. In Jesus' precious and most holy name we do pray. Amen. And right now prepare your hearts and our minds for our communion. Praise the Lord for one more first Sunday where we have the opportunity of practicing the word of God, where he asked us to do this as often as we do this, to do it in remembrance of this, of him. I see that brother and elder Mel and elder Gail are on the road. So we won't jeopardize their safety. Let us pray and I will, I will bless the uh, bread and the juice. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to just reflect upon the Last Supper in which, Lord, you asked us to remember you. And Lord, we lift up before you the bread this morning and we pray your blessings upon it, Lord. Bless it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift up our cup and we pray your blessings upon it this day, Lord. Your blood, we do it, Lord, in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same matter also, he took the cup when he has supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to, him, uh, to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many a weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Back to verse, verses 24 and 25. And when he had given thanks, he break it. And said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat. Verse 25. After the same matter also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my, in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now we offer up the benediction for today. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again, Lord, for an opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Lord, for the bread of life that was broken before us and fed us this day, Lord. We just pray, Lord, now that we've ingested that word, that you would cause it to be prosperous in our souls and in our bodies, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in that we thank you, Lord, for the harvest. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for the increase. We thank you, Lord, even for healing and prosperity, even now, Lord. In Jesus' name. And Lord, as we close out this service, we pray, Lord, that this week you will be with us, that you will carry us through this week, that you will protect us, Lord, that you will continue to supply our every need. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Jesus, 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 there is something about the name. Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus, 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 let all thank God for another Sunday, another first Sunday, another day of praise and worship and communing one with another, our dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you God for his presence and his Holy Spirit. And I pray that you were blessed today by his word and all that you've heard. And so glad that you did come to fellowship with us today. I pray that God continue to be with you throughout the day and if you are able to stay in fellowship with us, as well as prayer, um, please do stay for a little bit um, for the fellowship. If not, God bless you. God be with you. And don't forget to read your word. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless. God bless everyone. Amen. God bless. God bless. God bless your souls. Yes. God bless you. God, God bless you. Love you to yes. life. Yes. Love you to life. Amen, Sister Letitia. Amen. 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 I pray everyone had a good week. Amen. God is truly worthy of our praise. Traveling mercies to you, to the elder Pickney family. Traveling mercies. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Yeah. Hey, be, be safe. Stay safe. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless. God yes, bless. Lord. Remember, remember um, those who we missed this morning. Remember uh, the Sheckett family. That's Lindsay and Andre, amen. And remember our elder Rhonda Sheckett, she will be having oral surgery this coming Wednesday. Definitely before we close this part of the service, I'm gonna ask that prayer be um, lifted up for her um, as well. We thank God for hearing about Sister Perry. Thank God for another birthday for her, 95 years. Wow, God bless you. Give our love to her, Sister Wendy. Amen. What a blessing. Truly, what a, what a blessing. Good to see you, Sister Robin. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anyone have anything to say, any words or prayer requests? Again, you can always put, place them in the chat box if you can. And yes, don't forget, not this coming Friday, but the following Friday, which is the 15th, that is our Good Friday service. 
We have seven dynamic speakers. Please join us for that evening. Amen. <laughs> oh, God is good. Amen. Praise God, everyone. Um, I would like prayer um, in general, just for family. Amen. Just family in general. Amen. Amen. Yes, Letitia. Yes. If you don't know someone, and I think everybody has someone within their family that needs prayer. So that's, that's for sure. Thank you for that. Amen. God bless. All right. I'm going to ask. Um, I know that, are you available to pray, uh, Sister uh, Elda um, Gail? Yes, I am. I okay. am. All right. If you can just okay. lift up a prayer. Um, is it, wait, Deacon Spruill, did you have a prayer? I saw you were trying to um, unmute. Okay. We'll remember your family. Yes, Deaconess. <laughs> I see you shaking your head. <laughs> and I believe um, our sister Cynthia, um, her son, Raphael. Amen. And all, the, all that you can see, Elder Gail, I don't know if you can see all the faces, everyone here can lift them up in Amen. prayer as well. Amen. Amen. Go, go right ahead, huh? Thank you, Jesus. Dear Father God, Lord Jesus, we just lift your name on high, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for this word that came to us this morning, Lord Jesus, Jesus. that this is a war, Lord Jesus, and we will continue, hallelujah, to put on our armor, Lord, yes. our full armor, so that we can fight the wiles of the enemy, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord, continue to bless our pastor and his wife, Lord. Continue to bless the elders and the yes. members of this church, Lord. Lord, we thank you for those who are not, uh, not yet joined us that we are, Lord, that you already know, Father yes, God. Yes, yes, yes. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and for, for saving everyone and answering prayer, Lord. We lift up Ricky Perry, Sister Wendy's brother, Lord Jesus, uh, to heal his body, Father God, and to, to take away the spirit of alcohol from Raphael, Lord Jesus, and Letitia's prayer for her. We lift up her family, Lord, and everyone's family that is present, Lord, our children, our grandchildren, and uh, the mothers of the church, Lord, Deacon is through, Mother Letty yes, and Sister yes, Smith, Lord Jesus, and those that names that I have not called, but you know, Lord Jesus. And we pray for Rhonda's surgery. Lord, just guide the dentist's hand, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. We just ask all these prayers in your holy and righteous name. And everyone say amen. 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 Thank you. Praise Thank you, God. Jesus. Praise yes, God. God. Praise God. Yes, God. God is Jesus. Word. There's Amen. nothing too hard for God. There is nothing. You can just, if there's nothing else you remember, remember that. There is Jesus. nothing Jesus. too hard for God. Amen. Amen. We are all work in progress. And yes, yes we are miracles. Healing in his wings. Yes. yes, there is healing in his wings. There's deliverance yes. in his wings. Yes. We just pray for God's strength as we go through. You know, um, it's not easy when you're going through and it doesn't feel like any deliverance is in view, but God is there with us. Um, yes, he is. Yes, he is. And it's a building yes. of our faith. It truly, truly is. It makes us pray. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, it makes you pray. But in your prayer, in your waiting, just relish that time oh, yes, that you're spending yes, with yes, god yes yes oh. nothing is wasted when you spend time with god amen oh. amen it's just, just experience his power and his love as he Jesus. takes you through yes he yes he yes he can yes he can he's amen. god amen. he's god he's god he's god i love you all peace and joy and love in his presence and in his Amen. his spirit and in his time and in his time yes amen yes. traveling mercies again to the picnics a blessed day thank you so the much rest of the week we love you elders thank you for all you do and the prayers and please prepare yourselves and hearts for the upcoming fasting and prayer i do hope everyone under my voice here will join in that 
but truly it is a warfare. We are in a warfare and it takes every one of us to be on the battlefield for one another. Amen. 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 Love you. Love you all. Yes. Son Reese. Thank yes. Thank you, Sister um, Misi, for that. Will do. Her son, remember her son in prayer. Um, Amen. Remember her son in prayer. Amen. God love you. God bless you. <laughs> Holy, give, give my love to Austin because we don't ever say hi to Austin. Oh, oh yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he, he, he um, right after service, he. He I shuts know, down okay. and he's right into that's the okay. books. He actually, okay. he had a, he had his first exam yesterday dealing with this actuary oh. stuff. So, okay. um, yeah, he's, um, I thank you <laughs> for the prayers. That's round mm -hmm. one of six more exams to go. Oh, so, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, to become a, to become a full-fledged actuary, there are six excruciating exams <laughs> to go so but god is good and i and i yes. love all my love i love all my brothers and sisters i feel so blessed and honored to know that each and every one of you are praying for me <laughs> and my family yes. so yes Mariah, i'm not alone amen <laughs> all right hi sister wendy <laughs> sister wendy <laughs> Uh, and keep wearing those hats, Sister Cynthia. Nothing wrong with it. I, I, I should have wore what hat I'm going to my son. <laughs> sometimes, not all the time. Maybe, okay. maybe for the, uh, the special April, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Yes. <laughs> uh, you tell Sister um, Wendy, tell your mom that I've been trying to get her, but she can't get her on. She's probably in the street most. <laughs> That's right. She's 95 and young. You know, I'll, 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 thank you. Yeah, yeah tell her, I, I tell her, keep, uh, tell her, just wait a few okay. minutes. I'll be with her. <laughs> I'm 91. So she... <laughs> yeah, y'all, 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 God bless you all. God bless you and have a blessed. Beautiful you look this morning, Cynthia. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Robin. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> That's my daughter. Yes, she is. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless Take all care. of you. Take care. Bye. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.